Thursday, 23rd August, and this is Top Stories by Rooster News. The Kerala government has asked the centre to go by the 2016 National Disaster Management Plan while taking a call on the UAE government's offer of Rs 700 crore in assistance or compensate the state for the loss of such a hefty sum. Prime Minister Narendra Modi had welcomed the UAE government making the Rs 700 crore offer. It is only natural for nations to help each other. Moreover, the National Disaster Management Plan brought out by the central government in May 2016 does state clearly that any voluntary offer of assistance from other countries can be accepted, Chief Minister Pinarayi Vijayan told a news conference on Wednesday. While Mr Vijayan said the state would try to resolve the issue through discussions, if necessary with the Prime Minister himself, Finance Minister T.M. Thomas Isaac tweeted that the centre must either accept the UAE's offer or compensate the state. In a true example of communal harmony, a temple hall at Erevatur near Mala, on the southern part of Thrissur district, turned into an Eid prayer hall yesterday as the nearby mosque at Kochikaravu remained submerged in flood waters. The temple hall was serving as a relief camp for the people of Kochikavadu and nearby Kuru, two worst hit areas due to floods in the district. As the Muslims were searching for a place to conduct the Eid prayers yesterday, the SNDP Yogram, which runs the Pura Puli Kavu Ratneswari Temple, happily offered the hall for them. The Temple Trust also arranged facilities for all the Muslims, including water for the devotees to clean themselves before prayers. Around 200 Muslim devotees participated in the prayers. In Malapuram district, a mosque has provided shelter and food to several Hindu families displaced by massive floods, while groups of Muslim men have assisted in cleaning two Hindu shrines affected by the deluge. The central government may have ruled out a nationwide ban on firecrackers in the Supreme Court, but fireworks units in Sivakasi, which account for over 90% of domestic sales, are not celebrating just yet. They are eagerly and anxiously waiting for the final verdict in the case, as only that, they believe, would end the uncertainty shrouding the industry for good. The Supreme Court is currently hearing a slew of petitions seeking a complete ban on the use, manufacture, licensing, sale, resale or distribution of firecrackers and sparklers of any kind in a bid to combat pollution as a matter of urgency. Fireworks units are already seeing sluggish order intake from dealers due to the uncertainty over the issue. During a Supreme Court hearing on Tuesday, the centre ruled out imposing a nationwide ban on firecrackers and instead suggested ways to regulate firecrackers, including producing green crackers, encouraging community cracker bursting in major cities, implementing a freeze on the production of series crackers, and bursting crackers in areas pre-designated by the state governments. The Tamil Nadu government also favoured the restrained use of firecrackers instead of a complete ban. Employing safety tips she had picked up while doing a school project, Zen Sadavarte, a 10-year-old, ensured that her family members and neighbours remained safe when a fire broke out in her building yesterday. Zen, a Class 6 student, lives with her family on the 16th floor of Crystal Towers. When she was in Class 3, she learned about disaster management for a school project. The knowledge came in handy yesterday. Zen first ensured that her parents and brother remained calm. She then cleared all the glass and told her parents and brother to tie wet cotton wraps around their faces. Zen then took them to her neighbor's house. The neighbor's house had less wood compared to ours. I had to ensure that there were fewer items that would catch fire, she said. The 10-year-old was also responsible for calling the fire brigade as well as securing a fire bucket with sand to put out the flames. 
PV Sindhu is seventh on Forbes's list of highest earning women sports persons in the world. Despite badminton's semi-professional status in most parts of the world, the Rio Olympic silver medalist earned dollar 8.5 million in the period between June 2017 and June 2018. This includes her prize winnings and endorsement deals. A major part of Sindhu's earnings comes from off the court as the prize money in badminton is still not at par with some of the other sports. In fact, as much as dollar 8 million of her income is from endorsements. The Indian badminton player burst into the scene with a silver medal at the 2016 Summer Olympics. She was the first Indian female athlete to win a silver. The 23-year-old has a robust sponsor roster with Bridgestone, Gatorade, Nokia, Panasonic and half a dozen other brands, Forbes wrote. Sindhu is also the brand ambassador for the Central Reserve Police Force and Vizag Steel. We round up this news cast with fuel prices from Key Metros. In Delhi, petrol is sold for 77.63 rupees per litre and diesel for 69.15 rupees per litre. In Chennai, petrol is sold for 80.64 rupees per litre and diesel for 73.04 rupees per litre. In Kolkata, petrol is sold for 80.57 rupees per litre and diesel for 71.99 rupees per litre. In Mumbai, petrol is sold for 85.05 rupees per litre and diesel for 73.41 rupees per litre.